We go in depth on our 2017 top picks next on Talking Cars. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm John Lincove. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. And I'm Jake Fisher. And it's that time of year again where we compile all of our testing information, our owner satisfaction, our reliability data, and then finally we look at safety scores. And we come up with our April issue content, which is on ConsumerReports.org, it's on Facebook, and it's also in Consumer Reports Magazine. And that brings us to one part of that, which is our annual top picks list. So our top picks for 2017, the 10 best cars. And Jake, could you tell us what goes into making a choice for top picks? How does a car qualify? Sure. So we're not looking at just one aspect of these cars, right? I mean, we drive these cars, we test these cars here at our track, um, but that's not enough. So we want a car that does well in that, but also proven reliability record. We're also looking at, at safety. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at availability of standard for collision warning, uh, automatic emergency braking. That gives it extra, extra points. We're also looking, making sure the car doesn't have any bad crash tests. Um, we're also looking at owner satisfaction, so we're actually telling, finding out what the people who buy these cars, what right, they what think about, tell that, us about what them. owners tell us about them. And we're combining all these factors together to come up with an overall score of these cars, and these are the ones that have just been right at the top of their, of their categories. And with crash testing, just to clarify, do <clears throat> we crash test cars? No. I mean, I know we, the answer, but we, you know, yeah, where do we, we get we, that we, information from? We try not to. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so the, the crash tests, they're, they're from the government, they're from the, uh, the insurance industry. Um, they, they publish these crash tests and we're looking at them. And you know, you want a safe car, that's part of it for exactly. sure. So Jen, why don't you kick us off? We, we've got okay. small SUV, which has been on the list in the past, and Subaru Forester is Subaru another Forester, one. Right. Another year on the list. Why don't you right. tell us a little bit about we, we that? We say that we've been talking the venerable Subaru Forester, and, and to me, the thing that that makes this the Forester stand out is its universal appeal. And, you know, we talk about we've done a couple lists. You know, best cars for teen drivers, best car for senior citizens. The Forester shows up on all of those Best lists. car with visibility. Right. It's the right car for a teenager. It's the right car for a young couple who's active. It's the right car for a family. And it's the right car for my 80-year-old mother who, because of the visibility and access. It's just universally appealing. And what are those aspects that, that some of those, you know, drive into it? Because Subarus are standard all-wheel drive. Right. You know. Standard all-wheel drive. So for people who need that, uh, there's that. I think the thing that sets the Forester, well, one is this reliability record. Sure. And the second is its shape and it's a little more boxy than some of the other small SUVs. Right. Upright, greenhouse, out of window. So great visibility and great access. Mm -hmm. And you know, so those are the things and it makes it feel more roomy. It gives you a little more cargo flexibility. It lets you put adults in the rear seat comfortably. All those little pieces, which is why it keeps appearing, you know, on all of these lists. And in our testing, you know, we had the 2.5i. There's an right. up-level turbo version, but right. we got 26 miles per gallon. Right, and that's wonderful. You and know, that's wonderful. You're not compromising tons of, of miles per gallon to get that. Right, that right. Before people used to say about Subarus, oh, all-wheel well, drive, you're going to get hurt. Now, mm -hmm. you're not giving anything up, really. I think you're giving something up. I mean, it, it's we'd be silly, but you're not giving up as much. Right. The compromises are far less. And Jake, what about safety front with the Subaru? Because they have a, a system that's that's widely available, I think, almost on all but the base yeah, version. Yeah, they have the uh, EyeSight system, which uh, you get an option on, on, on this car. Um, we would love to see it standard, but but it definitely has you know automatic emergency braking. It has um, forward collision warning. Um, by some measurements, this is a very very good system. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you, you look at this, you know, everything you get here, and, and you know, we talk about SUVs. I mean, we, we talk a lot about this actually in our April content about how. I mean, this small SUV category is now, this is the mainstream right. category. It's not family's cars anymore. It's not mid-sized sedans. Yep. It's these small SUVs for all the reasons that Jen says that does so many good things. And they're, you know, these are not pickup trucks with bed caps anymore. These right. are, they're, they're station wagons. Let's be, let's be yep. real. Yeah, they're, they're raised wagons. They're raised station, station wagons. And yeah, I mean, look at the fuel economy, 26 miles per gallon. Well, that's the same fuel economy you get if you've got a Subaru Legacy. Um, the braking is actually a little bit better than the Subaru right. Legacy. Again, that's sister, you know, sister car. Uh, you know, so so you're not giving up, but you're getting a lot more, and that's why people are. This is the new family car. Yep, it is. Well, staying on that, there's another SUV, and particularly the safety front, which is probably one another reason it made it to the top of our picks. Midsize SUV, which is a Toyota Highlander. Right, and Toyota, Toyota Highlander. I mean, you know, this is. You know, Toyota's making very reliable vehicles, very functional vehicles, comfortable, roomy vehicles. And when you talk about safety, yeah, they did make a change to the Highlander, and they're offering standard equipment, automatic emergency braking, 
standard equipment for uh, collision warning. And, and that's across the line. Across the line. It doesn't matter which one you get. You get right. the cheapest one you could find on that dealership floor, you got it. Yeah. You don't have to go find it. And it's, it's crazy because if you go and you, you purchase you purchase a BMW X5. You got to go find the option to get auto Certainly. automatic emergency braking right. for a lot more money. For yeah. a lot more money. I mean, there are many luxury vehicles that are just offering this as options on the High Line. If you get this other option package, and yeah, Toyota simplified it. They've just made it Toyota Safety System Plus standard. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Okay, let's move on. You know, with, with the vehicle. You got to remember too, and I give Toyota some credit. I don't know if you go back when electronic stability control came out. Toyota put it on particularly on their right. SUV lineup, right. long before it was required. Exactly. 2004, I think, they were putting it on SUVs. It wasn't a mandate until 2012. So they are taking the advanced safety and, and kind of running with it, which is, that's, is a good thing. That's what families, at the end of the day, talk about with right. vehicles. And they're yeah. buying SUVs with the, with the idea of safety. I want a safe vehicle. Yeah. Well, what else is there? Safety features, not yep. just the size of the vehicle. Right. And, and mm -hmm. it's an impressive vehicle. I mean, the, the, our test car, 20 yeah. miles per gallon with the yep. V6, 26 with the hybrid. You get um, the third row. 25 with the hybrid, excuse me. You get the third row, which can be very right. important to family travel. Yep. And uh, for 17, they, they updated it, more horsepower, new, new transmission. So yep. we'll see how that one does. Does it feel as big as it is? I don't think. It's true. Yep. There are other, one, other SUVs that have a much bigger feel for three rows. Yep. So kind of coming to that world, <laughs> we have the luxury SUV, right. which is the Audi Q7. Right. Do you want to give us a little bit of background on the Q7? Well, the Q7, you know, people have said, you know, it's indulgent and everything. But it's about $68,000 <clears> in $68,000. That's a be. lot of money. Um, but certainly Audi as a brand, much more reliable, mm -hmm. you know, much better in, in, our term, in terms of a brand overall. And there are some things like we were talking about family travel. You know, I'm putting my child safety hat on for a minute in that we do this assessment of which car can you put three child seats, a very common application for families now because everybody has to be in a child yep. restraint. That and some big heavy duty pickups, the Q7 and some F250 size trucks are the only ones that we say you can get the child seat secure and three of them three fit across. across. Right. So there's a very, you say it's indulgent, but they've done a really good job of making it very practical for families. Because it's difficult, if, even if you have the three rows, put a child seat in the third row, now what are you doing with two other ones? Take right. them in and out, climbing right. back forth. They don't have a slick <laughs> system to you know, pull the seat forward. So yeah, three across is great. Right. It's plenty roomy. You still get your cargo. You still have cargo room with, for when that. When you're using only your second That five row. person family. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Jake, it's, that car got a ton of miles here. Uh, <laughs> you know, 20 miles per gallon is sure. you know, very luxurious. Sure, it's not for everybody, but what are some of the other ways of, you know, that, that it really stood out for you? Well, I mean, I mean, let's just talk about our top pick. So, I mean, we traditionally do a luxury vehicle. Certainly. Or, and what we've decided to do this year is in terms of that luxury vehicle, it's just one luxury vehicle into the luxury SUV. And that's because the market has changed. The market yeah. has shifted. And when it comes to luxury brands, people are buying SUVs. That's the growth. And that's yep. the growth. And that's the reason. So, so yes, it's, a very, it's an expensive car at $68,000. Right. But compared to other luxury cars, whether it's an Audi A8 or a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, I mean, there are cars that are upwards of $100,000 that do not offer you what this vehicle is offering you in terms of the versatility, in terms of the, the seating capacity, and it doesn't give up much. I mean, it, in terms of quietness and, and- Ride comfort. Ride comfort yep. and, and all of the latest technologies, which actually is workable, you yeah. know? I mean, it, it, it's very high tech, but it's, it's, it's not cumbersome, I mean. The multimedia in interface, which is Audi's infotainment <clears> system, <throat> it's, it's pretty intuitive. It, it takes, it's a learning It takes curve. some Everything learning, yeah. It takes some learning, but, but it's, it's like, not it, overwhelming. I, mean, I just, call just, some of them overwhelming, yeah. Right, I mean, even simple things like, you know, setting a navigation system, right? I mean, that could be very difficult in a lot of these cars, but I mean, they've, they've you know, intertwined Google into it, so it uses a Google search, so it actually works, you know, like you would be use, right. using your phone or something yeah. like that. So, the total other end of the spectrum is the subcompact car, and this car doesn't have the, the highest road test score of any car, you know, but it's doing right. very well in the subcompact category, right. the Toyota Yaris IA. Right. Not to be confused with the Yaris. Very important. So it's, it's, a, it's, Scion, it's a very right. convoluted <laughs> path. You know, it was developed by Mazda. Yeah. Then it was sold by Scion, which Toyota then did away yeah. with, that brand. Yeah. So now we have the Yaris IA. Right. But there's, there's one real big feature of the why it's, you know, a top pick aside from its performance, and it's the safety and side again. And it's the again. integration of the safety again. Right. And, and the reason I like this is, is we talk about, and I've already mentioned, um, it's a very inexpensive car for that safety. So you're talking $18,000. As we tested it. Right. right. 
but you get these safety features. So if you're talking about you know, mm -hmm. a young career person who's buying their first car, even, I mean, there are parents who are buying new vehicles for their first time drivers. The, the ability to get that safety, that safety advantage for $18,000 is huge. Right, so it has low speed uh, automatic, automatic emergency braking. braking. Yep. And it's, it, it starts at $15,998. Right, so, so I mean, it's even less than grand, what we paid, right. You could get that safety feature if you want to do away with all options. Yep. And you're still getting you know, great mileage. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting, it's 35 miles per gallon overall. Right. Mazda DNA, you know, whatever you right. want to call it. Which makes it, it, it feel has a, a little better feel. driving, right? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. It's not a penalty box. Nope. So it's, it's a great car. Yep. It's a great car. Um, we're going to move to large sedan and it comes from one of the domestics. They have two on this list, but the first one is the Chevrolet Impala. And it's a repeat perf repeat appearance on this list. Right. Yep, yep, the Chev Chevy Impala. I mean, the first time I think we called it a top pick, we were like, what? I just rented one of those. That's no good. <laughs> it's garbage. And I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> it's not the one you rented. It's a different right, one. Right. And when they redesigned it this last generation, I mean, wow. It's like this new, this new Chevrolet. I mean, it was, you know, it's one of these cars that you kind of, you know, you don't look at the badge, you think you're a luxury vehicle. Oh, you certainly. think you're in a high-end luxury vehicle. It's got the ride, it's got the quietness, it drives nice, it's got a nice steering feel, it's got the roominess. The handling is great. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, <laughs> 22 miles per gallon overall. One of the things that really stands out, and uh, unlike some luxury cars, great controls. Yeah. You know, it's there, got yeah. the, the MyLink system and it's, it's got all the bells and whistles, but you could use it and yep. it's, it, it, it's logically laid out. Exactly. It's, a, it's, it's in a category that doesn't sell a ton, you know, a mm -hmm. large car, you know, it kind of straddles luxury. But like you're saying, you're looking at a luxury car, step down and look at the Chevy L Impala. The LTZ, you, it could be a luxury car from uh, almost any absolutely. other Absolutely, yeah. So, right, so there's a value there too. Exactly. Right. There Driving is, dynamics right. of luxury, but not necessarily there is. And it's been yeah. reliable, and it has actually mm -hmm. really good owner satisfaction in our survey. So, yeah. you know, yeah. a couple standouts. So the other Chevy is almost like, yeah an Impala but but smaller you know it's like what they do with to get to the Chevy Cruze right so we, we you know even what we talk about it you take all the, those nice things that they did with the Impala and the Malibu and you shrink them down into yep. the Cruze and it takes advantage of that in what I think is a very practical size that's very usable you don't look at the Cruze and go oh that's just too small right so you know and it's beating out some Civic the, the Corolla it's it's up exactly. over those and those are some really good cars but this just is a, a notch over right I mean we saw in our testing I, I think 30 miles per gallon overall yeah. which is which is good it's competitive in the category right. not sound. but the highway 47 miles per gallon on the highway right so it's a great commuter right I mean, if you need a commuter car but you also need to put your family in it on the weekend and you don't sure. want to go so small it's a great or, great option. you know someone who's on the road for sales or you yeah. know visiting a lot of different different uh facilities or whatever great vehicle, but you need to put option. a client in it and you don't want them to right. you know have to exactly squeeze they, themselves in yeah now they've got a we didn't test it yet it hasn't been out they have a diesel version but right. with numbers like that right a, right i mean it, it's very impressive fuel economy and you know i mean there's, there's a lot you know i don't know it, it, it's amazing to say this but it's like there's a lot that the you know, the foreign competitors can learn from this car. Yeah. And when you look at, I mean, the reliability is there. It's, it's, it's got great reliability um, from, from our data, but, but also in terms of the ride, I mean, it is arguably the best ride of any small car you could buy. The quietness, it's probably the quietest small car you could buy. I mean, they've figured out how to, you know, like I said, shrink down those that great Impala. attributes that they figured out with the Impala and now put it into a high volume vehicle. Really? And uh, it's extremely competitive. It, it, you know, slightly off the topic, it sh really shows GM can do some good, good products. You know, people have asked that for sure. time and again, for sure. and they've had a number of hits <clears> recently. <throat> yep. So, so there's one more car in the list, uh, final stand category is mid-size sedan. It's the Kia Optima. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't roll off people's lips all the time when they, when they think of it. <laughs> there's still a stigma well, there. There's, there's still there's an unfair still stigma from 20 plus years ago. Yeah. There is, and, and people, you know, I think people are used to Hyundai, you know, and the Korean imports. They're yep. like, oh yeah, Hyundai Sonata, I've heard about that. But I mean, we've said it before, Kia, is better right you know and what and what we talked about well, before. what is it why, why is that so so what happens is i mean hyundai and kia are kind of the same company and they're kind of sisters there but what they do is they offer the vehicle first the hyundai and they keep on doing this first the hyundai the parent they, with the parent they get it first get it, yeah and then you know you, then kia picks up the scraps you know next year but it's not that way at all because by the time that that new platform goes to kia they've worked out the bugs the reliability sure. is better they've actually maybe tuned the suspension better they've worked out everything so so almost you know in many categories the Kia is better and and this you know, the Kia Optima is so good in so many respects so I mean arguing you look at the, the ride the comfort the infotainment everything works well 
but they have still stuck to their roots, which is value. Mm -hmm. So when you're going and you're looking at a, you know, a Camry and a Cord, and you look at that same price, what you're going to get with this Kia Optima, you're winding up with leather and the Highline right. entertainment that's and, what I and, say. and, and heated and cool seats. Yeah. You get that for the same price that you would get just. And it's stylish too. I mean, because that's a cookie cutter category. That's right. Almost, right. You that's, know, it, it does stick out. You take off all the badges, and that one will still stand out as yeah, sure. Oh, hey, everything else looks the same. Probably the one place. Toyota has the advantage with Camry in the safety gear. You know, you're getting Toyota safety sense. So true. The, the Koreans need to step up a little bit on that uh, as far as making it standard features. Mm -hmm. We talk about owner satisfaction too. One of the things, to me, one of the biggest things of owner satisfaction is if you feel you got your money's worth. Right. And that is a car where you're going to say, I got my money's worth. Right. Great warranty. Yep. And full of amenities that I couldn't afford on mm -hmm. that Accord or Camry. Yeah, it's a 10 year yeah. warranty for the first owner. Yeah. So, uh, powertrain, so that, that's, that, that shows that they're standing behind their product. Right. Yep. And you know, in our test, 28 miles per gallon for yeah. the, the four cylinder, 2.4. Yep. Yep. So, very livable car. Um, so this brings us really to the final three vehicles in our category. One, people have been kind of waiting for probably, best compact hybrid. And that's the Toyota Prius. Huge surprise there. <laughs> it, it, it was off the list for a year because they had redesigned it. Right, just because we had a right, we didn't have the new test of the new right. one, um, and not, it got even better. If you look at it, fifty fifty two miles per gallon. I mean, yeah. it is just phenomenal. And with this latest design, I mean, not only have they improved again upon the already excellent, outstanding fuel economy. I mean, forty four miles per gallon. The old one was it's far really and away good, right? outside of what we could. Yeah, there's almost you know. diminishing returns. Exactly. I mean, in the fuel economy. You're, you're you're not spending much at the gas pump. Right. You are. You're not, you know, filling it very often, but it's it's just they've also made the car drive better. Yep. So this car actually drives, you know, I just say much more normal. Right? The ride is great. The ride is definitely improved. Yep. The steering is improved. Um, it is. There's really very little compromise yep. in this vehicle. Yeah. It, it took away some of the negatives. You know, we used to mm -hmm. the early ones. It was like, oh, the regenerative braking and the sound of the right. transmission, the all those little bizarre. noises like a that you project, hear in a quiet. You know? <laughs> if it didn't have the backup beep. The de 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 right, that it has know, to have, you yeah. know, I don't think you would know. I yeah, don't think it, it you is, would know anymore you that know. you would you were in a hybrid if it didn't do that funny beep when yep. you're backing up. No, it does, and in, so, and there's no compromise with that vehicle in the sense of it doesn't have a a huge bump somewhere that limits cargo capacity. Right, it doesn't right, make right. the rear seat yeah. tiny or something like yeah. that. Uh, you know, its you design get, is actually super versatile. The hatch and the mm -hmm. it's yeah. incredibly versatile. It's yeah. easy to get in and out yeah. for for you know adults of all ages and kids. Uh, the, the, the fake leather is, is very supportive, right. so, you know, the regular cloth seats are fine. Um, it doesn't have a, a, a giant goofy system up front. It's a little yep. weird still yeah, or, or awkward to use with yep. the, the gauges up front. You have yep. to get used to it, but it doesn't change your life so much. Mm -hmm. Right. And Jake talked about fuel economy. I mean, there's the big reasons we, we don't want to be dependent on, on so much fuel in the environment. There's so many big reasons, but you know, I, I talk about people have such harried lives. That ability, and you mentioned it, convenience, of not having to go to the pump that oh, often, yeah. until you have it, you're like, oh, I'm still going. It's been three days, and mm -hmm. I don't have to pull in. Exactly. It's fantastic. Yeah, and one other thing you can check off. You don't have to yeah. plug it in either. So right. it's not like you Without have Without having to plug it oh, in. Oh, great. You know, I have this car. It's getting this great mileage, but I got to yeah. plug it in. No, this is the conventional one. They well, make a plug-in one. Yeah. You don't even have to do it. Well, and it just, you know, again, the, the compromises, you know, I mean, when it comes to alternative fuel, I mean, you go to, obviously, electric has its own issues. Diesels, we've seen plus or minus in terms of the environmental uh, concerns of that. Um, any type of new technology, there's reliability concerns. But look at this vehicle. I mean, it's been out for, what, 15 or more years. Yeah. And it has been consistently, yeah. consistently reliable. Through exactly. Exactly. People ask about the batteries. You could find batteries <clears> that are either, you can, for a, a couple grand, you can buy a, a Toyota battery. You could even find them from uh, aftermarket. But they're they're rebuilding yeah, them they're for, rebuilding for, for for not not much money. Exactly. You could you could get one from a salvage yard, one of the older models. Exactly. It hasn't been like you know the big uh, battery issue. That right. It's not like you get to ten years and it's done. Right. You got to throw it away. Right. Yeah. No, you can keep this for a couple hundred thousand miles, as we've seen with older ones. Yep. So another car, no stranger to the list. Yeah. Uh, I'll give this one to Jen. Sports car. Oh, we'll yeah. call it the Mazda MX-5 Miata, but Miata. we all know it as the Mazda Miata. Yeah. So Mazda Miata. The thing, you know, even for someone who doesn't identify as an enthusiast, maybe me, I'm just driving the mom car and doing all that, but <laughs> that car is fun to drive and it's easy to drive. Yeah. Even manual, the transmission is just so great oh, and it's so sporty. Part of your body. Yeah, and it, it's just so great. And, and it just 
even though they continually make it better and redesign it, it keeps that with it, and you know it's just fantastic and fun. They almost went they went back to their roots with this one. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it got a little smaller, feels a little lighter. I'm not a fan of the seat. The way they yeah. went a little too much on the seat, I think they could be a little more supportive. But yeah. you know, it still it still has the Mazda DNA, and it's a great fun car to go fast at a slow speed. It, yeah, exactly. I mean, they stuck to the roots. I mean, you saw so many other sports cars that they grow up and they have big horsepower and they get they price themselves out of yep. with our market. They're not doing that with this car. They're sticking to their roots from 1990 to, the, to today. And this car has such a great reputation. I mean, certainly it's an easy car to live with. I mean, it's yep. reliable, it's fuel efficient. The, the, the shifter is like a light switch. Exactly. But, I mean, such a real reputation. I mean, you go to any like uh, you know, sports car racing mm -hmm. or any amateur clubs, it is just it's filled everywhere. with Miatas. Right, right. I mean, this is a car that competes and can and does it so well. And because they're reliable. I mean, the last thing you want to yeah. do when you're when you're doing that type of event, you know, is, is having to constantly break. Miatas are, are right. we'll just say they're 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 stone cold reliable, yep. and that's why. Which makes them a great used car. Exactly. We have a, we have a colleague who just bought one for a second car, and you see them as that second third car that's oh, just yeah. their weekender and top down, and yeah, because they're still out there. You can get them for a decent price, and they're super. And reliable. the only reason people are selling them is because they're getting a slightly newer used version right. as well. Right. So. Well, we really come yeah. down to it. That's the biggest competition to a Miata is a used Miata. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, final car. We have. We're nine of the ten top picks. Top ten is compact pickup car. <laughs> yes. Use that truck. Clip yeah. Com compact pickup truck is the Honda Ridgeline. Right. Uh, right. Redesigned. Right. Yeah. Redesigned for for this year, this model year, and it's it's got excellent owner satisfaction. I mean, owners love it. Uh, the previous 20 miles generation, per gallon, yeah. tw previous ge so, generation, yes. Yeah, so, so I mean, look, this is this is really a very functional vehicle. I mean, we're not. This is looking at compact pickup trucks. I mean, look, if you need a pickup truck to tow and haul, there are better options. I mean, this is not a vehicle that is going right. to tow horses like or whatever. pounds plus, right? Um, but for what a lot of people do, I mean, I could, I could. Tow a race car on this. Um, you could tow a boat oh. on this. You've got a bed that you could fill with stuff. You've got the trunk that's built in, which you know is a huge deal oh, in terms of security. It's a game changer. It's in many a game ways. changer, yep. and it drives. I mean, it's it's based basically on the Honda Pilot. Mm -hmm. It drives better than the Pilot. Exactly. I mean, it, it is it is so incredibly quiet. It's such a functional, livable vehicle. Yeah. I mean, we had it as a as a weekend vacation car, right. and. and the kids could get up in, in it very easily. You yeah. know, it's comfortable enough to just put miles away on the highway. You don't get that weird bounce that you would Trucky, get in a truck, ride, in a truck right? truck, whether it's a compact or a big yeah. one, when the bed's unladen. Right. So you know, you, you have it. It's quiet. You know, you're not getting any any noises that's in great. it. Yeah. It's probably, a, it's it's probably the vehicle. quietest Honda. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. That's true. Yeah. And, and we don't rate styling, but I will say, I and mean, it, it now looks like a pickup truck. The wingy thing is is gone. Yeah, it used to be the bed had that you angle. You know, like right. you know, Jake's kids said it. And his son, my son, they were like, oh, it looks like a truck now. It does. You it know, does. They even which put a, it's appealing to put a kind of a seam there to make it look right. like there's a separate bed. It's not, but yeah. it handles well. You know, you don't yeah. have anything tricky with it. It's it's a better riding Honda Pilot with a big bed, a bed. and it can tow 5,000 pounds, mm -hmm. um, which is which is for a lot of people. It's not macho. If you're buying it just for looks and for attitude, fine. Go spend more, get worse fuel economy. <laughs> you know that that's fine if it's for your attitude. This is a really great vehicle, and sometimes you have to try it, and you'll find out. Right. You yep. know that, that well, why people love it. Right, and I think for the weekend warrior, it's a great vehicle. If you don't need to be a super truck or heavy duty, then this is a great truck. Yep. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. So that's a wrap for this episode of Talking Cars. As always, thank you for watching, and see you next time.